Welcome to another edition of John's Garage. Hey, before I forget, make sure you like and subscribe because we want to make sure you don't miss any episodes as we make more and more things happen on this Willis project. Now, today's episode is a little bit different. You can see I'm sitting behind a desk. Why? We have run out of parts. We ordered some very important chassis parts for the Jeep and they're not ready yet. So, what are we going to do with the time? We're going to solve another issue that's been nagging over my head since the day I bought the Willis Jeep. And that's the title. How do you get a title on a war vehicle from the past? It's trickier than you think it is. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a little kid. It takes a village to make a title happen for a Willis Jeep. And I want to walk you through that project. It all started at the very beginning when we bought it. Luckily, the guy that helped me buy this Willis is a dear friend of mine. His name is Barry, and he's an accountant. And because he is an accountant, he's very good with details. And he made sure that when we made the purchase, that we had some very important documents that come into play later in the story. Document number one, a notarized bill of sale. Make sure it is notarized, not just a bill of sale handwritten, but something that a notary has witnessed. And when you do that, make sure you get a photocopy of the seller's driver's license. In this case, it was the widow of the previous owner of the Jeep. So we're glad we have that because it comes into play later in the story. And then also, there's something called an odometer disclosure, and it's actually a document that shows the mileage on the vehicle at the time that you purchased it. Those three documents are very important. So we got those. I took those three documents to my local title specialist. Her name is Bert. She's awesome. She's helped us with a lot of transactions over the years. And she said, well, you've got a little problem. And the problem is the Willis never had a title. Here's why that happens. On a surplus war vehicle, back in the 40s when they were getting rid of all of these Willis Jeeps and other military vehicles, they did not issue titles to folks. They gave them a certificate of origin is what it was called. And that wasn't a problem in the 50s because in the 50s, just like you see this plate that was once on the Willis, you could register a vehicle using a certificate of origin. No big deal. Fast forward to 2021, that is no longer the case, at least in the state of Louisiana. You must have a title to register a vehicle. Well, I wanted a title because not only am I gonna drive the vehicle on the street, but also before I pour all this money into this Willis, I'd like to have a legitimate title. So in case I go to sell the thing one day, the person's gonna feel better about the purchase. So I decided to make it happen. So Bert, my title specialist said, you're gonna actually have to get the justice of the peace involved. I was like, justice of the peace? She said, yes, they can actually do something to help this process along. I thought a justice of the peace was just somebody that did weddings for people in a hurry, but it turns out they do a lot of different things, and one of them is documents for titles. So for Mr. Gray, my friend that helped out with the title, he asked for several things. First things first, the three documents I mentioned, bill of sale, copy of the seller's license, and that odometer disclosure. But he also needed photographs of the Willis Jeep as we found it. And in those photographs, it was important that we actually showed the data plate attached to the dash of that Jeep. So we actually took that photograph and actually put an arrow at that data plate where the serial number is located. Very important. And he refer referenced that in his document that he provides later. He also wanted to make sure that we had... That's all. <laughs> That's all he asked for. Hmm, my bad. So <clears throat> we mailed all that to the judge, Judge Gray, and he created what we call a court order that shows that I actually own the Jeep. He goes back to the bill of sale date. He says that on this date, I purchased the Jeep from the widow, and he actually issued this court order. Now, this court order has a lot of power to it. When I took it back to the title specialist, once she saw the court order, it's game on at that point. She turns in the court order, submits it to the DMV, and the DMV actually returned a title to me with the serial number on the VIN section of the title. Now let's talk about the importance of that because I've mentioned there's another couple of ways that people register Willis Jeep sometimes. Maybe you've done this in the past. Some folks go the route of a home-built car or a hot rod. Reason for that is, is because when you build a hot rod or a home-built or a kit car, there is no VIN because it wasn't built by a manufacturer. So they actually issue a VIN for the vehicle. There's a little plate that's made. They attach it somewhere to the vehicle, and you have a VIN number. 
but it's for a custom made car. And that's cool if it's truly a kit car or something built from scratch, but for a Willis, I wanted a real title that referenced the serial number that's actually on the vehicle. Well, because of that court order, because it's mentioned in the actual court order, the serial number is, that was actually placed in the VIN section of the title that I received. Super cool. Now, a couple things you got to know about the title. Here's mine. It will say on the title, just of the piece, court order. That lets the future person that's maybe trying to purchase the vehicle, or if you're willing it to somebody in the future, when they see that title, they know that it was made possible because of the order of adjusted the piece. Just a little detail for you. Now, there was one little snag that I thought was interesting, and it may only be for Louisiana. I know it applies to Texas as well. But depending on where you're watching from, it may not apply to your state. But when Bert went to put the drop-down menu and fill in the make of the vehicle, Willis was not an option. For some reason, in Texas and Louisiana, you cannot title a car or truck or off-road vehicle as a Willis. Nor can you choose MB for the model. So, what does my title say? 1941 Jeep. No model, just a make of Jeep. I know that's not ideal. I wanted to say 1941 Willis MB. Not possible in Louisiana. So just be aware of that if you live in Louisiana or Texas. Don't get frustrated when it ends up being a Jeep on your title. Woo! So, $223 later. Got my receipt right here. A couple weeks passed by, got a title in the mail. Didn't leave with a plate because that Jeep is not ready to drive yet. No sense in paying for a plate before the vehicle is actually ready to roll. So, <clears throat> I hope this has been helpful to you. A lot of work went into it, but you can get a title for your Willis MB. Now, as we move forward in episodes, because of this part shortage, I want to just give you a heads up. We're going to see some different vehicles in future episodes. We have a lot of friends that have different issues with their vehicles, and I'm hoping that you'll stay tuned in because the issues that we address are kind of universal to a lot of vehicles. So you're not really wasting your time. It may apply to your Willis project if you're focused on that. But I wanted to give you a heads up because until those chassis part comes in, there's really nothing else we can do to the Willis at this point in time. So please stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the next edition of John's Garage.